Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we are here with another 4K display that we're gonna open up, show you what it is, hook it up, see how it works. Uh, today we have a, another Seiki television actually. You might remember we looked at the Seiki um, 50 inch 4K ultra high def display. Uh, the box looks very similar. Uh, it's still a 4K by 2K 3840 by 2160, 30 hertz display. Uh, it has a single UH, U, ultra high definition HDMI input essentially. But this is significantly smaller and significantly less expensive. It's 39 inches and it will retail, I think for, I think it's selling now for $699. Um, so what's interesting about that is that we're getting into the whole, the realm of incredibly cheap 4K displays. Now I do wanna point out, if you're watching this video either live or recorded, that we did post a review of the ASUS PQ321, which is a 32 inch, 31 and a half inch display, 4K, 60 hertz. This is a 30 hertz, so we'll kind of compare and contrast a little bit as we go. Uh, same little uh, remote control there, and then I think this is safer if I put it on the ground to take it out of the box again. Stand. Another one of those fancy blue HDMI cables. And let's just go ahead and get that monitor out. <laughs> Apparently this is a two-person job. There we go. Okay. Move that out of the way. Let's set this down to unbag it. So now I know we had questions about it already, such as the fact that it lists 120 hertz capability. That is not at 4K resolution. That's only at 1080p resolution will it do that. So I expect features and functionality to be pretty close between these two displays. Although I do see our first difference. If you look at the inputs, there's actually dual HDMI, USB, VGA, audio, DTV, coax, and then you've got some audio inputs there. And over here you actually have component, more USB, another HDMI, and some different audio in. So you actually, this the top one's audio out, this one's audio in. So a little bit more I.O. than the 50 inch had for sure. Um, Get some of these packing materials out of the way. And there is the panel itself. Nothing too shocking, especially when there's nothing plugged into it. Uh, but let's go ahead and get our stand out of its packaging. Let's see if we can't get this installed. All right. There we go. Kind of fits in there like that. I'm sure our accessories are in here. Oh, and they did not provide a little tool, so I'll have to make a trip over the shelving to get some, uh, get a screwdriver here, guys. Pardon me for just a second. The stand actually appears to be essentially identical to what we had on the 50-inch Seiki 4K TV. Um, just five simple screws that go into the base here. And a simple, pretty, pretty standard glass display. Nothing fancy here. Again, we're talking about extremely low cost, especially for 4K. Mm. 
nothing beats the excitement of watching somebody apply five screws. Now I don't think, we'll have to go into the menus and see and look at the manual, but I saw, I saw no indication that uh, just because we have three HDMI inputs that in any way this is going to change the fact that you can only use one at a time, that it's 30 hertz signal. Um, that would be pretty interesting if they change something, especially for $700, but don't count on it. So just one more and then we'll flip it up. All right. So here we go. This is the SE39 UY04. So essentially, it's even the exact same model number except for the switch from SE50 to SE39. So we've got everything ready here. We've got our inputs, we've got our controls on the side. Uh, your power source menu channel volume. It's a little bit different obviously than what the ASUS had because the ASUS was a monitor. This is a TV. Did the 50 inch have uh, a tuner in it? I don't think that it did. Uh, I think it just had HDMI and um, component input maybe? Might have just been HDMI. Let's go ahead and take this off and get the full gloss effect. And apparently this will cost us $17 a year to use. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move this over to our testing area and uh, set it up there next to some of our other monitors. You may have seen this testing area in use quite frequently with the other Seiki TV and the Asus monitor. So there we go. All right. Actually, I correct that. The Seiki, 50 inch Seiki does have the same inputs. Has a coax, has a audio in and out, VGA component. Looks like it has fewer HDMI connections though. So here we are in apparently the space where we test our new 4K displays. Um, and it's definitely noticeably bigger, right? So the Asus monitor we had up here uh, just right before this is a 31 and a half inch, this is 39. So it's definitely gonna look different. We're gonna hook this up to an NVIDIA test bed, GeForce GTX Titan. And uh, we have the exact same blue cable that we had before from uh, our last Seiki. But let's go ahead and connect I'll we'll just go ahead and connect it to the easy one here, HDMI 3. Power it on. And power on the system and see what we get. Again, I fully expect the experience to be the same as we had before. Let's see, I like English. Let's do Eastern Time, Home Mode, none of that, Home Mode, yeah, sure, there you go. Ta-da, there we go, 3840 by 2160 at 30 hertz, and that's going to be the limitation. So here is, let's see, we can go into our uh, system here, what are you looking for, Kim? Okay. Check our screen resolution, 3840, 2160, and yeah, 30 hertz. And no option to go higher than that. So this is essentially taking the 50 inch TV that we had before and scaling it down a bit. Um, you can tell, again, I don't know how much of this comes over the recorded video, even just looking at the desktop, the, the visual quality you get with this versus the PQ321 is pretty dramatically different. Uh, what I will go in here though is change the DPI setting to the 150 option. It's gonna need to sign me out for some reason to do that. Yeah. 
and this will kind of make things a little bit bigger. What you may have noticed is like that kind of animation that came up there is definitely less smooth with a 30 hertz panel than it is with a 60 hertz panel. And that's not really going to be changed or modified in any way. Let's go into the menu here on this because I know last time we turned down sharpness and that kind of helped with uh, yeah it's actually I can already see it's making the text a little bit better in that way so we've got our classic puppy video that's been on every 4k TV that we've done it still looks really good and um, so there are definitely quality differences between, or performance differences, quality differences between a 30 hertz and a 60 hertz panel. But what you get with a 30 hertz panel, uh, like this, is simplification, right? Ease of use. We didn't have any issues with post. We didn't have any issues with cold boot. Uh, with our NVIDIA platform, it's a single HDMI connection. You don't have to worry about uh, multi-stream transport or anything like that. Uh, this all seems to work relatively straightforward. Uh, but what you sacrifice is image quality, right? So the mouse movement feels a little bit different on 30 hertz than it does on 60 hertz. The animation of bringing up that menu looks different on 30 hertz than it does on 60 hertz. And again, it may not be something, if you're watching this video and you say, well, I don't really see a difference, you're watching a, a recorded video through a live stream or on YouTube or something like that, it's, it's really hard for you to tell, so you kind of have to trust us when we say that kind of stuff. Um, but we can still run our games at uh, the system resolution. Let's, uh, yeah, let's try that. This was a uh, heaven. And your, just because we're running at a 30 hertz refresh rate versus a 60 hertz refresh rate doesn't change what the performance of the system you're going to have actually is. What does change is kind of how that performance is presented to you as an end user. So what you will see when a display takes twice as long to refresh the screen is that sometimes you'll see, see we have VSync disabled and you'll see some of these visual tears, these horizontal tears that you see all the time when VSync is disabled, but you see them more frequently on a 30 hertz screen than you would on a 60 hertz screen because there's, there are more frames that are being presented to you at any given time, any given refresh sequence. So just again, this is uh, Unigen Heaven running at 3840 by 2160. Uh, I think ultra settings, I guess I can check that right here. Quality setting is, yeah, it's on ultra. And we're running at about 17, 18 frames per second. And this is uh, with 4X anti-aliasing enabled uh, and on a single GeForce GTX Titan. So you could use SLI and you can use 3 way SLI to improve performance on this. And you can use Crossfire if you have AMD platforms too. So it still looks stunning up close. Uh, but let's try maybe lowering the quality settings. I do want to, I kind of want to see, let's see. Let's try to make it at a higher frame rate and see if the 30 hertz issue is maybe kind of lessened. We're just going to make this medium and we're going to turn off anti-aliasing and uh, run it that way. I imagine we'll see a pretty dramatic increase in our frame rate. Again, this monitor is for sale today. This it's not a monitor, it's a TV technically. Not really much difference, but it's for sale today. I think it was on Amazon for 699 bucks, shippable with Prime. So it's uh, a, a pretty low cost 4K solution. So here we are running at 25. I wanted to get something over 30 frames, so let's uh, disable another couple of features. Resolution is gonna is killer on these. So that was, uh, we'll do tessellation disabled, and let's just do low quality settings just because I want to be sure we get over, th over 30 this time. Uh, 699 bucks. The 50 inch version of this TV is selling for uh, just under a thousand, I think, on Amazon, 950, 970, something in that range. And then the other display, the third 4K display that we have looked at, well, that looks much different 
uh, in low quality settings. But uh, the Asus PQ321, that's a $3,500 panel. So uh, we posted a review of that monitor. We've posted uh, a story about the 50 inch panel, which is kind of sitting behind us there. And this is the new 39 inch panel from Seiki. And now we're running at so here this was running at 65 frames per second. So more than twice the refresh rate of the panel. And I can tell you that it, it, it's a much better experience than when we were running closer to 30 to 35 frames per second. Uh, the horizontal tearing that you would see is dramatically less apparent. So. I guess what this kind of tells me, again, we're gonna do, we'll do more testing with this monitor uh, in the coming week, uh, two weeks, I guess, with QuakeCon and everything coming up, um, is that if you want to game on a, a 4K display, but you don't have the budget for something like the Asus uh, 4K monitor that just came out, this is a viable alternative, but you'll need to, to make sure that you are adjusting your quality settings so that you can run at a frame rate at 60 or above. It's more important that you run at a high frame rate when the refresh rate of the panel is actually lower. So the, again, this is just heaven. We're running it right. Of, this is actually just under 60 right here. Uh, one thing that you can do, though, that you couldn't do with that ASUS panel is run at a lower resolution. So if you're comfortable running at a lower resolution, like say we don't have the compute horsepower to run at 4K, but let's run at 1080p high and see what that looks like. This monitor, this TV will actually scale things correctly. Now, it, obviously, it already looks a little bit blurrier than uh, it did before. What did it have up in the corner there? 24 hertz. 24 hertz? Yeah. Yeah, and that doesn't look very good at all, to be perfectly honest with you. It looks really bad. 1080p. Yeah, it's actually, it's doing something. It's cutting it off. It's overscan. Yeah, there's an overscan on that. I don't know. We have to... So, uh, the 50-inch had that issue. Did it at 1080p? Okay. Okay. Uh, where am I looking? Is there anything here? No, not really. We'll have to take a look. Here we go. Zoom mode. Zoom wide, zoom, just scan. So there's just scan, where there is no um, overscan, apparently. I don't know if that was in the last TV. That option? Yeah. Well, they've had, apparently there's been a firmware update or two for the 50-inch Seiki that I don't think we've actually put on that TV yet. So I will say that this, sitting this close to it especially, at 1080p is not a great experience. We have anti-aliasing turned off, so that's definitely something... Not the best. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not the best. So these, when you get into the low-cost TVs, the scalers that they're using are going to be lower end as well. doesn't surprise me that because of that, that this is um, lower, lower quality. I don't think I can change. Can I change anti-aliasing without uh, restarting? Apparently not. just want to see if that actually affects anything in any significant way. 1080p, 24 hertz. Yeah, I don't get that. There you go. It catches up. Looks better, for sure, with the anti-aliasing on. But I'm seeing um, a lot of these visual, these horizontal tears as our frame rate there was in the 80s. Now we're kind of in the 70s. Uh, so the 30 hertz refresh cycle is kind of coming into play. A lot of noise in that part as we zoomed or panned up, a lot of noise over here. So that's actually, it's actually a significant quality difference between the 4K and the 1080p, which kind of makes sense in some regard because it's a quarter of the resolution. Um, but definitely worth noting if you're one of those people that was considering, well, let me get a 4K display, but even though my GPU horsepower can't be, isn't enough to maybe push 4K resolutions. So, I mean that that's I mean that's pretty much all we have for this particular display right now. I mean we can I can I can run other games. Let me let's see where is our uh, Metro Last Light benchmark? That might be kind of interesting. Let's show that. Let's see 3840 2160. Let's move it down to medium motion blur normal tessellation normal. Go ahead. Let's see if that 
impresses or not. Um, oh, we're updating Steam, of course. And it's downloading an update for last slide. Oh, it's not going to take very long. Uh, so we got a lot of feedback from the Seiki article, and I think because of that article and a lot of other people's discussions about uh, a low-cost 4K display, they sold a ton of them. And at $700, I think they're going to sell a lot of these here as well, even for people that, uh, you know, you have to be comfortable knowing what you're going to get in terms of the 30 hertz refresh cycle. It's different. Uh, I had a discussion with uh, one of the vendors this week when we were talking about the ASUS monitor and switching between 30 hertz and 60 hertz mode. And I was like, what is it about 30 hertz mode that makes it feel kind of sluggish, like animations are slower, the mouse movement is slower, and he, he basically said, have you ever used a 30 hertz refresh rate monitor before? You know, when, when CRTs were out, they were significantly higher, even than 60 hertz options, 75, 80, and LCDs were always running at at least 60, and now we've got 120s and all that kind of stuff up there too. So it's just, I think it's something you can get used to. It's not great. Um, you know, I, I would think if you were doing precision uh, production work, Photoshop, that kind of stuff, not great for that because of the, the kind of lag you see in mouse movements. Um, it's not really lag, I don't know how to say it. It's just like the mouse cursor isn't moving as smoothly as you would expect. And that is because the screen you are seeing is getting refreshed at half the speed that you would be uh, used to. Uh, and apparently we waited all that long for an error to happen on Metro last light. Good job, guys. Fantastic. Um, what else can we run maybe quickly? We can try Crisis. Again, you're watching us play on a 4K display while you're watching on a 720p stream or 1080p stream, regardless of what it is. Uh, and that's <laughs> kind of limits your uh, uh, capability of seeing what the, what the difference is. I know that there are places where you can go view 4K content. Best Buy, local to us, has the Sony... 4K TVs on display, but I'm not sure I would exactly put this in the same ballpark as that. That might be, is that a 30 hertz yeah. panel? So it is, it has the same restrictions as this, but that's $5,000 and this is $700. Um, I'm sure there are other options. Sony didn't send me any TVs, so let's turn off AA and just kind of see what we get here. It looks really sharp. I mean, um, fonts that scale correctly with 4K look really good. That's pretty impressive. Well, I don't have a frame counter up here, but it's fairly low on a single Titan. And because of the low frame rate, you can see a lot of that tearing kind of being more consistent. You do have a little bit of the mouse latency visible even in the, the gaming scenario. But, you know, even up close, I got to say that it looks pretty good. Crisis 3 is one of the better uh, titles for demoing 4K content because uh, it has very high resolution textures when you enable them. And... It's pretty apparent, and this, this is one of the games for people who say anti-aliasing isn't necessary with 4K. This is one of the games that kind of backs up that statement. Other games that we tested, like Dirt 3 and Skyrim, do not back up that statement at all. Uh, but you can get away without anti-aliasing on this, and I don't think you're missing much in terms of uh, visual quality.
Yep, they're, 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 the, the, the feel of the game and the mouse movement is definitely different with 30 hertz than it is uh, with 60 hertz. So that's something to keep in mind. And we will keep that in mind as we do more testing on this panel. It's, uh, we might have to surround ourselves on this desk with 4K displays and just kind of see how they all work, how they all compare side by side. Uh, you know, we can put that ASUS here, we keep this 39 inch here, put the 50 inch right here and see which one works best. I'll, Ifinity at 30 hertz. Ifinity at 30 hertz. We could do that at 4K resolution. They'd all be different screen sizes, and um, Lord help us how much compute power we would need to do something like that, but it would be possible. This obviously makes a lot more sense as a computer monitor than the 50-inch does, just in terms of being able to sit on a desk. You know, this is too close as it is, but if I sit, you know, a good three feet back from it, this is usable as a computer monitor. Um, and that's good news actually I picked the wrong browser because that's going to look bad with the font here it doesn't scale nearly as well as Firefox does but yep so here you can see we've got our ASUS PQ321Q review up as well and we have we reference a lot of our Seiki testing in that article so be sure to check that out and then as, I'm say, as I said we're going to do more testing with this in the coming weeks, and we will give you a little bit better idea of what we think it is worth, uh, if the $700 price tag is worth investing in. There's a lot of other options out there. As I mentioned in the story that went up today, you know, you can get for about 400 bucks a 27-inch 2560 by 1440 monitor from companies like Monoprice. So there's a lot of things to consider, and those are running at 60 hertz, obviously. So this is the Seiki SE39 UI 04 monitor TV and uh, 4K now down to $700. Check out more of those stories at PCPer.com. Thanks, guys.